Okay. So this is the painting that we are going to create. And uh, it's mainly the bicycle, then the bricks, then the door, window, and the garden at the bottom or a lawn or some grass. So I'll teach you each step. I'm just putting this on the side. So let's start the session. I'll be first taking my flat brush. Now with this, I'll introduce you with the first technique, which is called wet on wet technique. So what you need to do here is, this technique is very much uh, similar to what you are doing. Like when you do it, you'll get to know, yes, it is wet on wet technique. So take your cup of water and put the flat brush, dip it inside it. And we are going to create the background first. That's the bricks. Just the background on the top. That's the bricks behind the bicycle, leaving the window, leaving the door. So we are just going to wet the bricks with the flat brush. Try not to cover uh, the other elements like the bicycle. So if you see it here, I'm just trying to cover the brick part in the background. And I'm covering on the right hand side. The right hand side part has very less amount of bricks. So I'm just covering it with water. So why did I say it as a wet on wet technique? We are wetting the base and we'll take some wet brush with color on it. So wet base with wet brush technique, which is called wet on wet technique in short. I hope it is clear till here. It was very simple. Initially, I'm a little slow for you all to get a hang of it. And then we'll continue it in a little bit speedy way. Now, let's take the rounded brush or whichever brush you have, which has a nice tip, but a long, a good amount of bristles on it. Now, dip this brush in water. I'll just show you this. Dip this brush in water. And take some yellow color. Now my yellow color is here somewhere if you can see. And I'm taking good amount of yellow. Whichever yellow shade you have, light or dark, is okay. Now we are going to go along the horizontal way like this. And just let the color spread on its own and then give a direction to it. So uh, people usually say watercolors, they have a mind of their own. That is, they will spread on their own, especially when you use the wet on wet technique. But along with that, you can give some direction to it. And by giving direction, I mean here is to go horizontally. And if you think your color is too bright, like here, I can see my color is too bright. I'm just using some water and spreading it. Now you can spread this yellow throughout the bricks randomly. You don't need to cover each brick. You can have some white space in between. The reason I'm saying to have white space is that you can add some blue color or some brown color on the bricks, but you can add your own colors, colors of your own choice as well. Just try to follow the technique that I'm showing you. Now, I'm taking some more yellow. The base is wet, the color is spreading, but I'm also giving a little direction to it. And I forgot to mention, I hope you have something to sip along, to snack along. Please enjoy along with learning. Just take it as a paint and sip. I'm having my cup of water along. So this much I think is good. I'm just spreading this brighter part. And here, if you want to make any brick brighter, you can add more yellow on any of the bricks that you want to make bright. So this technique is called layering, which is usually applied in acrylic art. I try to use different techniques from one medium and apply them on the other medium and uh, try to tell everyone about it so that you can use it. So this is bright. This is bright. I kept these ones bright. And if I want to spread it, Further, I'll take some water and just spread it. 
Now, let me know if you have any questions for this part. This was the base shading for the bricks only. And let me know anything you want me to repeat or any question you have. And if you all are good, please give me a thumbs up. Thank you so much, Patty. I'll just scroll through. I can see a few thumbs up. I know you all must be busy, so don't want to disturb you. So done with the yellow. Now it's your choice. Do you want to layer it more? You want to make it light? You want to make it dark? And you can even add these things later. Now you can see my color is even going on the masking tape. That's the reason I'm using it. When I take it off, it will have nice fine edges around. Now is the next step. Let's clean the brush. And the next color I'm thinking of using is blue color. Now, I have a light blue color. I hope you all have a light blue color in your kit. In case not, just use a wet on wet technique and it will help in making the color lighter. So any brick you want to make light and your base is dried, you, like this one, I choose to make it blue. I just wet this particular brick showing you with one so that you can later on add more. Now I'm taking my blue shade here. Mm. And see, this is amount of blue I have taken and I just add it towards the edges of this brick like this and then spread it inside. Even if it covers any other element, it's a light color. And in case you want to just take off that color from anywhere, just want to show you an example, you can just dab it with your paper towel wherein you see any kind of color going in the other element, just dab it and it will just go away. Now, if you want to lighten this color, like if I feel this is very, very bright, just take your dry brush, clean the brush, dry it, and just rub it lightly on top of the entire brick or the entire element and it will become lighter. This is called the dry brush technique. Wherein you just dry the brush and with no color, with no water, just rub it on the element you want to make it make light and it will absorb the extra color or extra water. Now we can add this blue anywhere we want to create some blue bricks or any other color, whichever color you want to add anywhere. Now I'm just adding some blue here. And try that you add it at the places where there is less yellow or very faded yellow. Like I added it here. Now I want to just make it light. So I'm just using my dry brush or there is another way you can just dab the paper towel on the brick and it will get lighter by absorbing the extra color. You can extend it further, the same color in the next brick or a little bit on the top if you want to add that shade throughout. So this was another technique that I wanted to tell you. Now you can add as many blue bricks or yellow bricks around. I'm going to add like one or two blue and then I'll show you how to add some brown. I hope everyone is enjoying along. Maybe I'll add it here. Even if it covers a little bit of your bicycle, it's okay. Let's do some brown around. 
So here also you can just cover the brick that you want to color brown. You just need to, now brown is a darker color. It can be added even on yellow. So what you can do here is just wet one of the bricks, any brick. I'm wetting this one. Again, it's all wet on wet technique that we are applying. It's the wet on wet technique or the dry on dry technique, which I'll be telling you next, that are used most in watercolors. Now I took some brown here. I want to show you this shade of brown I took. It's dark, but when we use the wet on wet technique, it helps in making the color lighter. Because the more the water we add, the lighter the color becomes. And the less the water we add and more the color we add, the brighter the color becomes. That's the uniqueness of watercolors. That they help in creating two shades with just one color, one light and one dark without mixing any color in it, just with the help of water. Now this part got a little dark, I'm going to dab it. And just spreading it. So wherever you want to add some brown, you can easily add some brown around. Now, this is a base shading that you are doing. That is, you are giving a light shade to the base of your paper. Now, anywhere else you want to add brown, maybe here. Just adding it on the corner. I want to spread it further. I can easily spread it further. Then somewhere on the right, I didn't add much brown on the right. So I'm bringing it here. And it's done. Now you want to layer it more or you want to add more brown. You can easily add more brown on top. That is called layering. Now, after it dries, if you see any hard edges like lines on your paint, on your uh, particular brick that you have painted, you can just use some water on the brush and rub lightly on it and that line will go away. That is called a hard edge. Now, should we come to the next element? Are we all good or do you want me to wait? If we are good, you can give me a thumbs up. I'm just doing a little bit more brown here. Or thank you, Patty. Thank you for the thumbs up. Anyone else with a thumbs up? Or maybe a thumbs down. It's okay. I can wait. <laughs> we still have a lot of time. Don't worry. I'm just doing a little brown here. So just wanted to show you that this is how you can make it darker, dark brown. And if you want to make it light, you can easily dab it. Let's come to the next step. Next element though, that's the grass. Okay. And for that, again, we'll be using the wet on wet technique. For wet on wet technique, again, you have to wet the base with a flat brush would be best, but you can use any, any brush. The main aim is to wet the base. So I'm just wetting the bottom. You can even cover a little bit of the bicycle tires. It's okay because it's all green and it will be covered with the bicycle tire colors later on and that will be covered. Now with the flat brush, we have wet the base and now you can take your rounded brush or maybe even the flat brush. It's okay to take any color for even coloring on top. So the two colors that we are going to add here are let me just focus on the grass part only first color i would prefer light green color if you have it in case you don't have light green color you can use yellow color for the base just the way you used for the bricks now i took some green light green but in case you don't have light green you can use some 
yellow color. Now here I am just spreading it at the bottom. You must have drawn a line to show the partition between the bricks and the grass. So under it, under that line, just cover it all with light green or yellow color. Somewhere it will be dark, somewhere it will be light. And since the base is wet, or even if it's not wet, you can wet it a little bit and take the next color, that is a dark green color. In case you don't have dark green, you have any shade of green, you can layer it on top of yellow or light green. So this is the green I'm thinking of using with the same flat brush. Now, if you use a flat brush, it becomes easier to cover the base. So you see the way it is spreading. I'm taking some darker green shade here. I showed you first and now I'm using it. So here, you don't need to cover it all with dark green. We need a gradient look here. Somewhere you can keep it dark, somewhere you can keep the base shade that is light. So I'm doing the same here. Any dark shade of green you have, just use on top. So you can see the way it is blending with the background because of the wet on wet technique. So that's why I say wet on wet technique is mainly used for the sky part, grass part, for creating water effects, for creating wider areas, uh, especially for the clouds. They are really helpful. I'm adding a little bit darker green here. More. Now, again, you can work on any element later as well, even if the base gets dried. So you can leave it for now till the time you are satisfied. And then you can continue further on the same element when your painting is done. So only thing you need to do here is to activate your painting again. Just add some water. It will be activated and then you can follow the same techniques. Now, till the time you're doing the grass, just wanted to ask, I hope you all are doing good. Any questions? Anything you want me to repeat? All I want to say here is, wherever you see any hard edges, now as the base is getting dried, I saw a few hard edges on my bricks. You can easily take some water and rub on it. So here I saw a few hard edges. Even when the base gets dried, you can easily add some water and take away those hard edges. And anywhere, as I said, my base got dried, I'm using some water on one of the bricks and adding some more color there because I think I missed that brick. So just wanted to let you know, you can start from anywhere even when your painting is complete, you want to improvise anything, you can easily do it with watercolors again. Because some people say that watercolors are not forgiving. I don't think so. They are very forgiving. Any hap happy accident or anything that you want to improve on can easily be done with a wet on wet technique. Should we continue to the next element? Yes. Great. So let's come to the window. Now window, I really love this part because it's, it's, it's a very relaxing part where the color spreads on its own when you add water on the base. You can again use your rounded brush. Here. No need of a flat brush because it's very smaller areas that we are going to paint here. You take your rounded brush and just Dip it in water and add water on one of the squares of your window. Just one square. And take the light blue color or the blue color, whichever one that you had used on the bricks. And yes, the choice of colors is yours. In case you want to use any other color, you can use. Just follow the same techniques. Now I'm here, I'm using some light blue. And this is the first square that I have wet. Just check the consistency of the blue. Just see how bright or dark it is. I think this is a good color. I just checked it on my paper towel. 
and then go along the outline of this first square. If you see this, it will spread on its own inside. Now, if you want to layer it more, take some more blue and just add it. Now, anywhere the, la the color goes out of your window, it's okay. You can quickly smudge it or dab it with your paper towel. Now, I see that there is a little blob of color that is coming. So, with the dry brush, what we can do is just try to absorb the extra color and give a shade that you like the most, light or dark. Just do it at your own pace. This is a small area. The color might come out of the square. Quickly dab it with the paper towel if you can. Now we'll move to each of these squares with the same technique. I want to add a little bit darker shade at the bottom. So I added some blue, more blue here to make it dark. Now I'm coming to the next square here. Some blue will spread towards it, but definitely we are using a blue color, so it's okay. Again, use the same technique. So it's a repetition of the same technique. Just go along the edges and let the color spread. I try to stay along the edges. That way the color stays within the outline. Now I see that there are some rough edges so I or hard edges. I'm just using my dry brush, using the tip and letting the color absorb. Did you like this effect? Or are you getting something similar? You will not get the same effect as mine because the way we are doing it is same, but the amount of color and the amount of water we are using will be different. Now come to the next square, just wet it. I asked you to do different squares separately, but I didn't ask you to do all the squares, like wet all the squares together because we want different effect for each square. And it will look nice when the window is complete. Now I'm taking some blue again. Now I see this one is a little darker. So what I can do here is with a dry brush, there is no color, there is no water on it. And I'm letting it absorb. Next, wetting the next square. And adding some blue there. Now, I hope doing all these squares one at a time, you must have got a hold of it now. Like this. Now, somewhere it's a little dark, somewhere it's a little light. That's the effect that I love about wet on wet technique with watercolors. And you have ways to make it dark. You have ways to make it light using dry brush technique and layering. Now let it dry and we can move to the door now. Now again, wherever you see hard edges, quickly use some water and this will happen to everyone because this is how watercolors work. But there are ways to take away those hard edges. And we will be making the bricks a little darker or brighter in the end. That was just base shading. Now let's come to the door. Are we all good to continue to the door? A few thumbs ups will be okay. I'm sorry to trouble you, but that just gives me an uh, candy. You want me to wait? Okay. I saw the thumbs down. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope I'll get a few thumbs ups for are you all enjoying your painting or is it too tough? No, it's good. It's good. Okay, the bicycle part will be a little bit time consuming, but the, everything else is more of a free flow art. 
the bicycle will be a little detailed there. So, can we, are we good to go? Okay, thank you. It's okay, just work at your own pace. Anything you want me to repeat, I'm here to help you. So now I will be moving my paper here a lit little because I'm good at going horizontally in creating uh, lines rather than going vertically. You can change the position of your paper as well. Here again, we'll be using the wet on wet technique. What we are going to do here is just wet the entire door. Maybe with a flat brush or with a rounded brush, whichever you want to do. I'm wetting it. Now, only thing I want to say here is, you know you'll be using the wet on wet technique, but when you are using the wet on wet technique, please go in the direction of the lines, the, the horizontal lines that you have, or when you put it back, the vertical lines that you have put on the door. Just go from top to bottom, or if you want to change the position of the paper the way I'm doing, go horizontally, left to right, right to left. So take any color of your choice, whichever color you want to use. I will be using the same blue color that I have been using earlier. Taking a little blue here on the tip of my brush, I'm going in the direction of these lines and see the color is spreading on its own. I love the this, this way the color spreads. And just go along throughout the door. Now I think I ha I don't have any color on my brush. So I'm using more. Somewhere it'll be light. Somewhere it'll be dark depending upon the amount of color I have on the brush. Just fill in the entire door. Don't try to bring the same shade throughout. You can have a gradient touch. That's the beauty of wet on wet technique. Now here, if you have any questions, you can ask me. I can help you again or guide you again how to do it. I really love this effect and I would love everyone to learn it as well. Now here I'm going a little bit the other direction. Now coming to the bottom. That's the panel at the bottom. I'm adding. Now you must have added a few lines or partitions on the door. Just overlap some blue color, even on a wet base, on these particular lines. And I think I'll have a little more here. Just going along the edge. bottom now if you feel that somewhere it's very dark you can just use your dry brush there is no color no water on this brush and just absorb the extra color just trying to show you all the techniques that might be helpful for you for this painting as well as any future painting now i'm coming back to the same position here At the bottom, I want a little darker, brighter base. So I am taking some more blue color, same blue color that I've used for the base shade. And if you see this uh, horizontal line going across the door, you can even cover that with some base color that you've used. I'm using blue, so I'm using on top of it some blue for the lines. So you can add lines even on a wet base. Later on, you can make them a little darker when the base shade dries. Now this part I feel is very dark, so I'm using a dry brush to absorb the extra color. Trying it again. And I think I'm good. At the bottom, I'm adding one more line. And then we'll be done with the door for now. And then we can add details later on. Now let's come to the bicycle. That's the main thing here. 
it will add to the entire background. So here we'll be using a thin brush. Now I'm bringing the entire painting here. We will be using a thin brush or a rounded brush with a nice tip. So take your thin brush or rounded brush with a nice tip. Whichever shade you want to do your bicycle, any color, you can use choose any color. I am using more of blue and brown here. And the same blue that I use, but here we'll be applying the second or the third technique. I think I told you two techniques. This is the third one, which is called the dry on dry technique, wherein you will be using very less water on your brush, paintbrush, and more color to make it like thick to create a nice outline. So that's why it's dry base almost dry brush with some color on it that's why it's called the dry on dry technique that's why i said you can easily re relate to the uh, name of this technique with the way you do it so i'm using very less water so it's kind of a hit and trial take very less water on the tip of your brush very less and activate your blue color that means it should be thick enough. That's why I said hit and trial. Initially, you might not get enough color, but then you can change the consistency of water in it, and then it will be the right shade and the right consistency. I think I have a good amount of blue here. Now, wherever you want to start with, you can. So I'm starting from the center here, the center rod of this. Try to stay within the outline so if i zoom it for you the, the tip of the brush very lightly like a feather touch spread the blue now i feel this blue is too dark so that's why i said it's hit and trial what we can do is use a little bit more water and spread it inside so I use the same color and I'm extending it further towards the entire rod. Bringing it down as well. That is the connection between the bottom rod and the top rod. Like this. And now I am coming to the bottom one. Somewhere it can be light, somewhere it can be dark. So this part, as I said, is a lot of details. So just work at your own pace. We are almost done with the base shading. And we still have a lot of time. My aim is to tell you everything that is needed to be done in this painting, even if you don't complete it now. You can use the same techniques and complete it later. I feel it's too faded here. So I'm just spreading it nicely. Adding a little bit more blue here. Now I'm coming to the next element somewhere on the left that is under the seat. Then near the pedal, I'm doing them all blue. But it's your choice, your bicycle. You can use any color that looks the best for your bicycle. I'm still using some blue. As I said, I'm using a combination of blue and brown. I will be changing the position of my paper. You can also do the same, whichever way you are comfortable. Just be sure that the base is almost dry even if it is not some blue spreading outside is okay because we have used some blue or any other shade that you have used in the bricks now i'm using some more blue and bringing it somewhere near the tire Now 
Now this part is very thin, so I'm just trying and praying that I stay within the outline. Whichever part I want to do blue, I'm doing right now and then I'll turn to the brown. I think I'll be doing the front part as well, blue. And this rod is a little bit bigger so I think I'll be able to cover it a little bit quicker than the thin ones. Just enjoy it. Work at your own pace. If you need a little rest, you can. It's just coloring using the dry on dry technique. Now this part was a little wet for me. So I am coloring it now. And see now it's giving the right shade. And don't worry if the lines go here and there a little bit. You are doing freehand art and it's tough to create perfect lines with just your hand and the brush. No ruler, no other elements used here. Okay, so let's move to this part above the tire again if the color is too bright you can use it then clean it clean the brush and just with with a little water you can extend it further so the same color that was bright helps in giving a faded touch throughout and now if you want to add another layer you can easily add some blue on top or any shade that you are using now i'm coming to the bottom near the left tire not covering the tire yet but just covering the joints Now, this is a bigger area, so I can quickly do it. The thinner ones get a little tough. And as I said, it covered a little bit of green as well. Now, I'm thinking of doing some brown near the wheels for the seat for the handle. Try not to do the handle yet because we will be doing some flowers or rose flowers. So let's do the handle in the end. But I'm thinking of coming to the wheels now and I'll be using some brown. So this brown color I'm using, again, activate the brown. That is, it should be consistent. It should be Quite good for creating an outline. Less water, more color. Again, a hit and trial method. Use very less water initially and then increase it if you need it. So I'm coming to the wheel now. And just start from the inside of this wheel. That's the circle. Now this, for me, this is the toughest of all the other elements. So just work at your own pace. And try to stay within the outline. Now this part takes a lot of time, but work at your own pace. I'm sorry for this trouble, but yes, the bicycle without the wheel won't be good. So we'll have to take that trouble. Just try Try to stay within. Even if something comes out, quickly dab it with a paper towel. Or you have the bricks at the back. You can spread it outside if you are using brown. That way, it will look natural as if part of the bricks. Even if something comes out. Now, I feel that this brown is too dark. So, I can just extend it further and make it a little faded. Is the same color I'm extending further. I also take a lot of time doing the wheel. Just 
just done with the wheel that is the round part and now you can make the inside wires here again using the same color or any color of your choice i would just prefer not to drag the brush here what you can do is with the tip of the brush if you can see on the screen just overlap each stroke over the other and cover your pencil outline that is the best way to create create straighter lines without any ruler just with your hand and the brush and continue further now i just want to be sure that the base is not yet wet because i don't want to put any hand impression on my painting so just be sure that your other elements have dried and i'm just continuing doing the bicycle tires now my my whole paper is moving round as i am continuing doing the inside i'm sorry you'll have to see it turning around here and there but i really feel comfortable when i do it this way so you can also find your own con like comfortable way of doing these lines and you can even make these lines a little thicker i'm adding one more here i'm making it a little bit thicker here now we can continue with the next wheel i hope you all are good it's very quiet i know you all are concentrating okay so again i'm using the brown color for the next wheel for the front wheel and i'm going around the circle now this is very dark i'm going to extend it after some time just moving it now i think i can clean the brush and use this paint with a little bit of water to spread it further i think out of all the other elements wheel takes most of the time now i'm trying to make this circle a little even i'm not sure if i had put uh, in the supplies like i know it you must be having a black pen at home or even a blue pen i'll tell you how to use it to give nice detail to your work but in the end just going further continuing with the entire wheel now here i added a little bit more brown because it was getting too faded think i'm good with the entire circle now you can do the lines or the wires inside lightly with a feather touch i'm trying to create these lines but later if you want to make them a little thick you can just overlapping on the pencil lines and you don't have to worry about making them perfectly straight that won't happen because we are not using any ruler just try to overlap on one stroke over the other
almost done with these. Making them a little bit more darker. And I think I'm good with the wheels now. And now we can do the seat, the pedal, and the basket in front. Whichever color you want to do. Now you can see anything you want to improve on. You can easily do that or you can move to the next step. For the seat, I'm thinking of doing the wet on wet technique. So just clean the brush, use your rounded brush and add some water throughout this entire element. After doing that, take any color of your choice that you want to do the seat with. And just let it spread slowly so that it doesn't come out of the element. Let it spread. Now I feel I can use some dry brush here and that will absorb the extra color and spread and fade it out. So this was the most, maybe the toughest part of the whole painting, but I think it will add really nicely to this entire background. I think this is good. Now we can move to the pedal and then the then the basket. Now the pedal, just use your dry on dry technique because it's very small. So you can just use any color of your choice and fill in the entire element. It's a suspense for me how your paintings are coming out, but I'm sure they will be great, unique in their own way. And I'm excited to see them in the end. So I'm just trying to fill in the small element here. What else we can do here is the basket left. Okay, what you can do is first do the outline. You must have created the sketch of the basket and just overlap on top with the paint. Just layer it with the paint, whichever color you want to use. I'm using brown because it will match the entire bicycle easily so i'm using some brown color again good consistency less water more color and using the dry on dry technique i am just letting the color flow from left to right from the bottom Then go towards the left side. I'm just moving my paper along. I try to overlap one stroke over the other. And just fill it in. Now I will be creating these lines on top. These square lines just to give a basket effect and you don't need to worry about how thick or thin these lines are they can be thick so you don't need to make them too thin and then i'm going to cross them i'm trying to use very less pressure on my brush here to create these lines. Now what we can do, I made it a little darker for a reason that 
I can quickly clean the brush and use a little water on the brush and spread this brown a little bit inside my basket. So you can see, I really feel it's very easy to use the outlines and then spread the color inside the element, which will make the base shade a little lighter, but don't rub it too hard because we still need these lines. So this will help in easily filling in the basket and not requiring much of work. Now let it dry. After it dries, we'll add some darker brown in between these squares or rectangles, whatever you have created. That will give a nice basket, natural basket look here. Now we can, till the time it is drying, what we can do is we can do an easy part here because I want you all to relax. I think you have done a lot of work with the bicycle. So let's do a little bit of dots. That's called stippling. And what we need to do is create a few flowers or leaves coming down the right corner on top of the door, like a tree is there on the right and some leaves and flowers are just peeping inside our painting. So what we can do is, again, dry on dry techniques. You can use your thin brush or the brush with a nice tip. Again, dry on dry technique. I'm thinking of using some red and green color. You can use any color of your choice for the flowers. So these dots will be flowers. I'm taking this red color, less water, more color. And then starting from the top right corner, I'm adding a few dots. Now these dots need not be the same size. Just add some random dots. And these are representing some flowers that are going from the top right corner. Just going down like as if they are hanging down a little bit like this, giving a little hanging look on the door. Where is my red? Okay. So coming down, maybe a little bit of flowers hanging down the left-hand side of the door. That is the corner. Just to give a natural look, you can make some, you don't need to make a very precise edge here. You can make it freely, a few dots. I will be adding a few more. You can add as many as you want or as they look good on your painting. So this is the most relaxing part of this painting because you just need to make a few dots. And I wanted you all to just relax a bit. little bit more and then we can come to some green color for the leaves. I think this is good. Now as I add more color, the color, the dots, they become the flowers, they become more brighter. Once you are done with the red, now quickly you can clean the brush, dip and dab it dip it in water and clean it and next is some dark green or light green whichever color you have so i am thinking of using this green color and adding a few dots on the sides as well as you can overlap somewhere down somewhere on the side somewhere on top of the red dot somewhere in between the red dots just to give a mix of flower and leaves effect I hope it's it was some relaxing part of the entire painting and helped you regain the energy to move further. 
after this we can come to yeah we can do that little bit of these details to the basket and then we will do the flowers then a little bit of details and then we'll be good so let's clean the brush you can keep on adding more dots you can keep on adding more flowers or leaves i just wanted to give you an idea what you can do here now we will use the thin brush again or the rounded brush with a nice tip and again use the dry on dry technique that is less water and more color i'm using brown color here the same color i used for the base shade and i'm just giving another outline on top because we used a little bit of that color on the lines for some base shading so i'm just adding them to make it a little bit darker and now you can use the same color the brown color using the dry on dry to fill in some of these squares so you can choose alternate squares and fill them in and keep some of them light so that gives nice uh effect of a basket some squares are light some are dark but see all of these are created with just one color depending upon the am amount of water that we have used here just randomly or maybe pick a few squares or just do them alternately that will give a nice effect of a basket now here we are just using the dry on dry technique because these are very very small elements i am done with the basket now i would prefer that we come to the flowers now these are rose flowers i call them as loose rose flowers the easiest way to create rose flowers and i think you'll feel the same you can just see one flower and then you can repeat again again as many flowers you want to create some will be inside the basket and if you want to create some on the back of the bicycle you can do that too so we are we all ready to learn the rose flowers thank you lin okay thank you patty okay so take your thin brush or the rounded brush with a nice tip whichever shade of rose flower you want to create take that color i would prefer red color because it's the brightest of all so which red should i use i think this one is good again dry on dry technique less water more color activate some red i think it is good bright it seems to be bright on my brush now you can choose the position where you want to create the rose flower i will create it somewhere above the basket so that it seems like it's inside the basket it's coming out of the basket uh and it should have enough space around so that you can create a nice rose flower so this one i think is the right space for me we'll start with a smaller rose flower so create a curve one curve or one uh, bracket you can say create another in front of it i'm doing it little slow but when i do it fast i think i do it better but i want you all to learn this so now we can keep on adding more curves around at a little distance from each other like this there should be a little distance between them this is the loose flower and it's very easy to create once you are done maybe we can create it this much size so just a curves starting from the center keep on adding them in front of each other add a little space between them and make a circular element here after this clean the brush and take a little water on your brush on the same brush and just spread these 
curves like spread the color of these curves inside this rose flower that will help in giving a nice base shade to the flower i hope it is clear till here so these were just curves adding curves and using their color lightly to spread around to give a nice base shade now if you I know you might not have used this technique before. So the first flower might not be as perfect as the next one. So keep on trying till the time you feel, yes, I did a great job. So after giving this base shade, let this rose flower dry. And then we'll add details to it. Till then, let's keep on making two or three more rose flowers. And that will be a nice practice as well as We'll be perfect in it soon. So now clean the brush again. Take any color of your choice. I'm taking red color again using the dry on dry technique. I think I will make one somewhere under this handle and the basket. I have enough space. I'll make a small rose flower. First curve. I think I can take more red here. Another curve, then keep on adding more curves around. I think this much of the rose flower will be good for this much space. Clean the brush, take a little bit water, don't take too much. Just use your judgment and just spread these curves, go in the direction of these curves to give a nice base shade to your rose flower. Now we can create maybe one more somewhere here. You can make it big or small. I try to start with a smaller one because it's easier to create. Again, creating the curves. So somewhere here, I'm making it near the window. I can add more red here. Adding these curves. And then cleaning my brush, taking a little water and spreading these curves. Now I think our previous rose flowers must have dried by now. So what we can do is layer those curves again on top. Because those curves were used to give a nice base shade, they got a little lighter. We are just going to layer them with the same color that you are using on top. So less water, more color, same base shade color. And give a nice red layer on top. Just layering some red color on the same curves. Now it will spread a little somewhere. Let it spread. And with a dry brush, you can absorb the extra color. So even if the base is wet, you can give a nice shade to your rose flower. Keep on adding these curves throughout all the rose flowers which have which you have completed or given a nice base shade. So this is how I did mine. This one. Now I'm coming to the next one. I hope this one has dried. So just by touching it, I'm seeing. And I'm adding some layers of curves on top. After this, we will add some leaves and some stems. So what you can do here is just use the tip of your brush and take some green color. Again, dry on dry technique. Now, wherever you want to add some leaves, just like I'm adding a curve, one curve, another curve in between two flowers and fill it in. Same way, do it for another leaf. Now, you can even add some leaves in between the other two flowers or maybe make some ferns around 
like one for a little longer, make one more like this. And then you can even add leaves to them. Keep on adding leaves on the sides and the top. Then maybe somewhere here I'm adding a small leaf just to fill in that space. I'm adding the leaves. Then the leaves can also be added. Some darker green color can be also added on top of the basket. Like the leaves are going down from outside the basket. You can take a dark green or whichever green shade you have. Try to have less water and more color like this. So as many leaves you want to create, as many flowers you want to create, you can easily create. Now... We can also create some flowers at the back if you want to do so. Do you all want to do a few flowers at the back of the bicycle? You're good? Okay, we can create a few. Again, any color of your choice. I still prefer red. So I am adding it somewhere towards on like above the tire, but it should have enough space around to create a nice round rose flower so starting one curve second curve as i go fast i feel i make a better rose flower but you can do it at your own pace now i'm cleaning the brush and adding some water around these curves to create a nice base shade Again, making one more, whichever shade you want to do. I really like the red, the bright red color actually adds to the background, but you can add any color of your choice. Somewhere here, I'm making one more. Make a few curves. Make it big or small. And with a little water, just give a nice base shade. Let it dry. And you can make a small one if you are following the same position. You can make a small one that in between these flowers and the seat and the tire. Just to fill in that space, I'm adding one more small one. This. You don't need to be specific where the curves are going. The only thing is that they should be in a rounded shape to give the effect of a flower, of a rose flower. Now I have a little yellow in the base shade and I'm using it for the flower. I'm not covering it entirely with red. Now let this all dry till then we can make a few leaves. Any color, dark green, light green, maybe a stem going towards the left, then a few leaves around it. A few leaves in between the rose flowers. So the aim is to fill in this space throughout and create nice elements. And I think the flowers must have dried. So the first flower that you did, you can start giving a nice curves or layers to them. 
This one is a little wet, so I'm leaving it for now. The next one is, I think, dried. So I'm adding the curves here. So just check. Again, it's hit and trial. If it's wet, just leave it for that time and then come to the next one. So this one was dried and this gave a nice line. So I can even touch it and see if it has dried. Keep on adding the curves. And I'm coming to this one. Now let these all dry. And we can come to this handle now. Whichever color you want to use for the handle, just use a dry on dry technique. I'm using my brown color here. And just filling it in with the dry on dry technique. If you're working on your flowers, please continue. You can just see what I'm doing. It's easy. Just fill in the entire element just the way you have been doing it for the rest of the bicycle. Just making it a little darker. Now after this, let's add a few details. We are almost done with our painting. We can add a panel to our window. You must need an outline. You just need to fill in the panel there, fill in the, those lines with any color of your choice. I'm thinking again of using some brown, using the dry on dry technique. And I'm moving my paper according to how I feel good and which way I'm more comfortable. Now I'm just filling it in. Now how light or dark you want to make it, it's your choice, but you know how to do it. More color, less water makes it darker and more water, less color makes it lighter. I am moving the paper a lot. Now this part got a little darker. So I'll be just leaving this much paint here. Clean the brush, use some water and just let it spread upwards. Now, if you want to darken it a little, you can layer it on top with the same color. After this is done, what we can do is we can give a few effects of grass at the bottom. So this is an easy technique. And even if you are not at this point, like you are somewhere else doing the flowers or the window, you can easily watch me, but just work on what uh, you are working on right now. That will just help you to know what to do. Again, with dry on dry technique, just take some green color or any color of your choice. Definitely it will be related to green because we are creating grass. Using the tip of the brush, your rounded brush, just make a curve. One, two, three, four, as many. So what I did, I did the directional lines, like lines in the same direction or curves in the same direction. Putting a little pressure initially on the tip and letting the color flow upwards like this. You can make as many curves here to create a grass effect small or big dark green color or light green color whichever you have and keep on adding them wherever you want to add even somewhere behind the wheels this it's 
So this is something I wanted to show you all. And you can even do it later. Now, what are we left with? A little bit of details around. We can add a few outlines to the bricks. You can use your uh, pin brush here. So now is the time just to add details. Wherever you want to add details, wherever you want to add some layers, you can easily do that. So with the tip of the brush, take some brown color. I know bricks are brown, so I hope you will all take brown color. And just see that it's not too dark. So you can check it on your paper towel. And just overlap these lines. So just with the tip of your brush, lightly overlap some outlines with your brush on top of your pencil lines. You don't need to cover them all, just a little bit here and there. And it's okay even if they get a little wiggly or they get a little uh, broad, we will be spreading them. I'm just adding a few and then I'll show you what to do. So as I added these, I'll tell you what to do. Just clean the brush. You want to do it, you can. Otherwise, you can just follow if you want to apply them. Clean the brush, take some water and spread these lines inside the bricks. That will help in giving a nice brown shade inside even on top of your yellow color and will make the lines a little finer. So this is kind of a fading out technique that you can use for the bricks. You want to do it, you can, otherwise you can leave them as is. And you can do it throughout. So it's just a little water and spreading them to give a nice shadow effect to the bricks. Continue further if you want to. And if you have any questions, please let me know. We are almost done with the painting. I'm just adding a few more lines here. And any brick you want to darken, you can easily add some same base shade on top to make them brighter. Now these lines, these brown lines are very light, so you don't need to fade them. The ones that are darker, you can just fade them and give a nice shade to your bricks. I'm just spreading it because I can see a few hard edges as the color dries and that is natural to happen. Spreading them a little bit. And in the end, we can even use some black pen to give details. Spreading it, giving a brown touch, smudging it. Okay, so any questions, anyone? We are almost done. Yes, I want to, I will be doing little details with a pen, just adding some brown outline around. Giving some soft edges around. So I'm just adding little yellow here. I think I left a little while we were doing the base shading. And then I'll introduce you with the pen. So it will be kind of a mixed media art. Adding some pen. 
and then one more thing that is just a few dots to give a magical touch to our painting if you want to do it you can otherwise you can just watch me so are we ready for the pen if you all have it you can even use a blue pen if you don't have a black one and if you want, don't want to use it, you can just watch me doing it. So wherever you want to add some details with the pen, you can like around the wheel, you can just do a little bit of highlighting with your pen like this, somewhere around the bricks. wherever you feel like adding some darker touch or even around the seat. You don't need to cover the entire outline. You can just give a little space in between and give those lines or details even. So that is just to give a little depth to your painting that I would prefer to add a few lines or outlines around like around these rods. That, that was just an idea I wanted you all to have that you can even use a pen, a black or a blue pen around to give some depth or details to your work. Even around the rose flower, if you want to add a few curves and yes, you can add a few dots inside your rose flower with some blue or black color pen you don't even need to use paint for that so a few dots inside so pen is a good way to add details to your work now if you're all, all ready we can even do some dots here i call it as a magic touch and i hope you'll also feel the same when you do it it is an easy thing to do the most easiest thing out of the all all the things that we have done in this painting. What we need to do is uh, take some water on your rounded brush. And whatever colors you have used for the base, you can use any color of your choice from them. Like if... Uh, blue i can take some blue take some water on this blue color good amount of water not too much not too less again it will depend on your judgment now you can even check it on another rough sheet or paper towel so this is a rough sheet if you want to check it if it's the right consistency the dots will be by tapping your finger on the neck of your rounded brush with the color and water and see how these dots are coming. I feel they are the right size. So if they are for you, you can use them and scatter them around for your paint. You can take some more. So what we are doing is taking some color and water on your brush and tapping around the neck of the brush with your finger. Keep on moving the brush to scatter those dots. That's how we have to do it. I feel it is a magical touch that it gives to your painting. It gives a bright touch to your painting. I hope you all feel the same. But if you don't like it, you don't need to use it. And uh, you can use another color of your choice. Maybe some green. So just use good amount of water on the paint and just keep on tapping. I am adding some green here, especially around the grass. And then you can even take some red color. So just giving you choices of the colors that you have used on the base, you can use them for the dots. There, though there is no specific name for this technique, but I call it as a magic touch. So you all can also remember it the same way. And it might remind you of me whenever you do it. 
I think I, we are good with the dots. Now, one more thing I think I forgot to tell you. If you want to add some across on your window, you can easily add it. So with the tip of the brush, you can use the dry on dry technique. Use some blue color or whichever shade you have used for the window. And you can make a partition with the tip of the brush for the window. So I'm using the same shade for the outline or for the cross shape. And you can do the same for the door as well. You can add a few lines. You don't need to add them throughout. Just a few partitions to give a natural look to the door. And then you can even sign your painting. I'm just spreading this blue a little bit. So the same technique that we did for the bricks, you can use it here or you can keep it this way. Just the lines, no spreading. And I'm going to take off the masking tape till then you can all complete your painting. And even if you haven't completed it, we can take a nice picture. So I'm just taking off this tape. So whenever I take it off, I pull it outwards. That becomes a little easy. And see how neat look it gives when you take it off. So if you don't have it, you can easily purchase it. I can even send a link to Lynn. And she can share with you all in the follow-up email. So this is the complete painting. You can sign it. And this is the best part. And we are done with the painting. I really enjoyed it with you all. I hope you all enjoyed it too. And I'm really excited to see your paintings.